Are you overwhelmed by the hotels at Disney World? There are a lot of them. Are you worried you're going to pick the wrong one? I understand. Well, we've got the tips to keep you from staying in the wrong Disney World hotel today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Okay, this hotel has a cool pool. This one has a restaurant you've always wanted to try. But what if you end up focusing on the wrong thing and book a hotel you're gonna end up hating? With so many options, it's easy to get confused and overwhelmed. But today, we're gonna go through all of the things you might not be thinking about when you choose your Disney World hotel and all of the things you definitely want to be thinking about to make that choice. It's a lot of money, you're gonna spend a ton of cash on your hotel, so let's make sure you are in the right place. If you want an easy access list of all the tips I'm gonna share in this video so you can reference it while you're booking, head to disneyfoodblog.com slash wrong hotel. Drop us your email, we'll make sure you get this list and get signed up for our newsletter so you don't miss any of the latest news and updates. Okay, so I've kind of organized this video so that we're talking about the most important things first that are going to help you decide on the broadest level what types of hotels you wanna stay in, and then we're gonna narrow it down. All right, so let's tackle the first one. You think you need to stay in a Disney World owned hotel. Well, there's like 25 of them, there's a whole bunch, and they're all different levels of pricing. So you could pay $100 a night in some seasons and you could pay 4,000 a night in some seasons, depending on what hotel you're staying in, which room you're in, what discount you can get, etc. So there's definitely a wide gamut. But one reason I often hear that people say they have to stay in a Disney World hotel is that they want all the same perks that Disney World hotel guests get. Well. Believe it or not, there are several nearby hotels that don't come with the same Disney price tag, but do come with extras that Disney hotels get as well. These are called good neighbor hotels. They're often on Disney World property. They're not owned or run by Disney, but they offer lots of the same perks like transportation, early fast pass booking when fast pass exists. And I'm just gonna say that quickly here, FastPass is not currently offered. We do believe it will come back in the future. So depending on when you're watching this video, it should be pretty easy to figure out if FastPass exists in your world or not. Early entry as well, that's when hotel guests get into Disney World parks early. And some of these hotels even offer character meals. Now our favorites are probably the Swan and Dolphin Resorts. Those are run by Marriott and you can use and earn Marriott points there but they happen to be within walking distance of both Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Plus, they're deluxe accommodations without being as expensive as the Disney World Deluxe Hotels. So these are definitely good ones to look into if you think you absolutely need to stay on Disney World property, but you don't want to pay those prices. Now, the second misconception that we hear a lot of the time is that you think you need to stay off property to save money. And off property means not in a Disney World hotel. Well, believe it or not, <laughs> you can get deals on Disney hotels too. Like I said, 25 hotels, very, very broad gamut of pricing. Now, if you're trying to vacation on a budget, you might not have to go as far away from the parks as you think. Disney almost always has a discount or deal of some kind, usually anywhere from 20 to 40% off their hotels. Some of these are for the general public, which means you and me, and some are for specialty groups like Florida residents, military members, annual pass holders, et cetera. Always check Disney's special offers tab before your trip. There's a little link at the bottom of every Disney World website page that says special offers. And that will tell you what's going on right now in terms of deals. Or you can join the DFB newsletter. There's a link in the description and we'll tell you as soon as a new discount is offered. So Disney's value resorts are the less expensive resorts. They're more affordable and they often come in around $100 to $125 per night if you can find a discount. Plus, Art of Animation and Pop Century Resorts are both on the Skyliner line, which gives you very quick and easy transportation to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios. And no Disney World value resort has ever had that kind of quick transportation. It's always been bus only. So if you want to stay in luxury and pay less, then yeah, you may need to stay off property. But you can find Disney World hotels that won't break the bank too much, and nobody should feel like they can't stay in a Disney World hotel just because they're on a budget, unless you're looking to pay like $30 a night, which I don't think hotels cost that anymore. They used to when, when I was in my 20s, but that was a long time ago. 
Okay, now that we've kind of dispelled a couple of myths about you have to stay on site or you have to stay off site, let's get into the nitty gritty of what you wanna do with your hotel time. So how much time are you actually gonna spend at the resort? If you already know you're gonna be at the parks from open until close without any breaks and won't be spending much time at all in your hotel room, then it might be your best bet to go for the cheapest option that gets you in the area. You probably shouldn't shell out the big bucks for a resort that you won't be spending any spare time in because you could put those funds toward other parts of your vacation. Bottom line, if you aren't really gonna be there for very long or have the time to truly enjoy it, then it's not worth the extra money, most likely, unless you just got a couple of grand sitting in your pocket that you gotta get rid of. On the flip side, if you're taking a longer vacation or have built some resort days into your schedule, you'll probably be more interested in the other features that your hotel has to offer. So you're in for some relaxation and pampering, spring for a hotel that has an on-site spa. Or you might have kiddos that are gonna spend half the trip at the pool, so you know you gotta pick a hotel that has something more than just a lap pool. Each Disney hotel is unique in what they offer, but you can find all sorts of fun activities you wouldn't necessarily expect. So figure out, are you going to make use of what your hotel has to offer, or is that just a place to lay your head so you can get up the next morning and go back to the parks? All right, now we get into the real question, your budget, because nothing else on this list matters unless you can afford it. All right, so probably the biggest decision maker here. You want a nice hotel, but you also don't want to totally blow your budget on your room. This is probably the biggest consideration. You don't want to spend all your vacation money on your hotel, especially if you plan to spend a lot of your time in the parks, because you know what happens in the parks? You buy a bunch of stuff. But it's understandable to still want to stay somewhere nice and feel like you're getting the full Disney experience. While you definitely shouldn't be overspending on your room, it is important to remember that cheaper isn't always better. Depending on you and your family and what you're looking for in a hotel and a vacation, there are a lot of things to consider. Also, I'm just going to throw in here that the older I get, the less likely I am to love staying in a super cheap hotel. Not gonna lie. When I was 20, sleeping on the ground in a tent 24 seven, no big deal. Now that I'm not 20, if I sleep on the ground in a tent one night, everything hurts, right? Okay, maybe you're not like me. Maybe you are a super, super flexible and hip and cool old person and nothing hurts, but for me, everything hurts. So that's another thing to think about. So it's possible that the cheapest price might not actually turn out to be the best deal for you when looking at transportation, location, theming, dining, amenities, etc. And don't worry, we're gonna talk about all those. One thing we say a lot is that time is money in Disney World. If you end up spending a ton of your day just trying to travel to the parks or traveling to get that dining reservation, it might end up costing you a lot more than you thought you were saving by booking a cheaper room. You definitely don't want to waste valuable park time sitting on Disney transportation for hours or sitting on the highway for hours. So if you know you're going back to your resort a few times each day, it might make more sense to spend a little more money for a hotel that's closer to the parks. Okay, so now that we've kind of figured out what impacts our budget, let's talk about discounts. Like I said before, you might be able to score a better room or hotel than you thought you could if you're able to score a really great discount that balances out the cost of that upgrade. And you can usually call Disney and rebook your trip with a new discount applied if a discount happens to come out after you've already booked. So let's say you've already booked your trip, but you totally forgot to check that special offers and discounts page. Or after you'd already booked your trip, Disney announced a new better discount that falls on your trip dates. Well, you can usually call Disney and they can help you get that discount applied to your trip or rebook it for you with a new discount applied so that you get the best deal. Plus, these discounts could mean you end up staying in a more expensive hotel than you were originally planning. Disney tends to grade their discounts, so while the moderate resorts might be 20% off, the deluxe resorts could be 30% off. So while you may have been pricing and planning for that moderate resort room, once you look at the deals, you might be able to spring for the deluxe room and not spend too much more. All right, let's move on to location. This is a really, really important one with Disney World because as you know, Disney World is the size of two Manhattan islands. It is giant. It is 42 square miles across. So just because you're staying in a Disney World hotel doesn't mean you're close to everything, especially not Animal Kingdom Lodge, which is like an easy 30 to 40 minutes away from Magic Kingdom. So do you already know which parks you'll be visiting the most on your trip? If so, that can help you narrow your choices by picking a hotel that's close to the park you'll be at the most. If you're heading to Disney World during an Epcot festival and know you'll be making multiple stops, it might make the most sense to choose one of the boardwalk area hotels or one of the hotels on the Disney Skyliner that'll get you over to Epcot super fast. 
If you know that Magic Kingdom is your go-to favorite, you've got little kids, they're just gonna go to Magic Kingdom every day, then a monorail resort or wilderness lodge might be your best bet. If you know you'll be spending a lot of time at a certain park, you don't wanna pick a hotel that's on the other side of Disney World from it, unless you really don't mind that transportation time. Take a peek at some Disney World maps to see if the hotel you're interested in is close enough to where you wanna spend most of your time. It really does make a big difference and that time does add up. Speaking of, let's talk about transportation next. Currently getting around Disney might take a little longer than normal as everything is still operating under limited capacity due to social distancing measures. If you aren't planning to drive yourself around Disney World, there are still many factors to consider when choosing where to stay and how that will affect your ability to get to the parks. So let's first start with buses. Buses may not be everyone's favorite way to get around, but is the most consistent way to get between all the parks, resorts, and Disney Springs. Each Disney hotel has bus transportation to the parks, though schedules may vary. Some Disney hotels offer only bus transportation, such as Disney's Coronado Springs Resort or Animal Kingdom Lodge. While a bus might be good to have as one of your transportation options, you might not want it to be your only option. Buses also get very crowded around park opening and closing, and it could take much longer than expected to get to the parks as well as to return back to your room at night. However, on a crowded Magic Kingdom day, taking the bus from the Ticket and Transportation Center instead of the monorail or ferry might end up saving you time. So the takeaway here, find out if the hotel you're interested in only has buses. If you're okay with that, great, no problem. Or if you're driving your car to the parks every day, no problem. But if you want other transportation options or you wanna be able to walk to a park or take a quick Skyliner ride to a park or a monorail ride to a park, those are all faster ways to get anywhere than buses and you may wanna spring for the upgrade. All right, let's talk about the monorail now. The monorail can be a great option for those Magic Kingdom hotels that are on the monorail line if you're willing to put up the extra money for the stay because yeah, those are the most expensive hotels in Disney World. They are Disney's Contemporary Resort, Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, and Polynesian Village Resort. These are most of our bucket list hotels. Everybody wants to stay in these spots. And at peak traffic times, if you're staying at one of these hotels, it would likely be easier to walk to the park, which, yay, you actually can. With the recent introduction of the Grand Floridian Walkway, it's possible to walk to Magic Kingdom from any of the monorail resorts, which is a super great bonus. All right, let's talk boats. Boats are another popular form of transportation around Disney property and can be a way to avoid buses in some cases. Wilderness Lodge has a boat that goes directly to Magic Kingdom and the Boardwalk Area Resorts, which is the Boardwalk Resort, Disney's Yacht and Beach Club Resorts, and the Swan and Dolphin Resorts offer boats to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Some hotels close by even offer boat transportation to Disney Springs, like Port Orleans French Quarter and Riverside and Old Key West Resort. Now, Port Orleans Resorts are not open right now, heads up. If you are watching this video at a later date, you can definitely check to see if they've opened back up. Now, boats can be a unique way to get around, but even in normal times, they have a smaller capacity than other forms of transportation. Now, of course, we have the Skyliner, which is the newest form of Disney transport, and since its introduction has made some of the more out-of-the-way hotels a ton more desirable. Honestly, I think the Skyliner is the best thing that ever happened to Caribbean Beach Resort, Pop Century, and Art of Animation. The Skyliner is a gondola and it connects two parks and four hotels. There's two value resorts, Art of Animation and Pop Century, Caribbean Beach is the moderate, and Riviera Resort is the deluxe slash Disney Vacation Club Resort. Like every other form of Disney transportation, the lines here can get backed up or stalled even though the Skyliner does run continuously. Now at the end of the day, it all comes down to what's most convenient for you. If you don't mind only riding buses, you're going to have a lot more options. If you want to be able to walk to a park, that's going to narrow you down to the most expensive locations. And keep in mind, if you're going during a busy time at Disney, like spring break, peak summer, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's going to be crowded no matter what. Getting to and from the parks could add an extra hour to your day both ways, no matter where you're staying, so you might want to prioritize a hotel that is within walking distance from at least one park so you can get a break from that crowded Disney transportation. But again, that's going to be the priciest option. Like I said, some of the best choices at the moment are going to be Art of Animation Resort and Pop Century. Those are value resorts. They're perfectly comfortable and they're on the Skyliner, which means you get very, very quick transportation to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Also, here's a bonus. Art of Animation does have family suites, which means if you have a larger family or you're traveling with a bigger group, then you can grab those family suites. They're a little bit more expensive, but you get a dedicated master bedroom and master bathroom and two other double beds as well. 
All right, now I love this tip. This is something that I don't think anybody ever thinks about when they're considering their Disney World hotel. Check the last time your resort was remodeled. Some rooms at Disney World have been recently remodeled while others are a bit on the older side. Some hotels are as old as Disney World itself. The Contemporary and the Polynesian Village Resorts both opened with the Magic Kingdom in 1971. However, the Polynesian is currently going through a Moana-inspired remodel, and that will update every single hotel room. And the Contemporary is slated to have work done on rooms in the main A-frame tower of the resort as well. Wilderness Lodge, when it reopens in June, will be completely updated. All-Star Movies, which just reopened, also had a recent renovation that completely changed the room layout to include a Murphy bed that doubles as a table during the day to free up some floor space. All-Star Music and Sports are both scheduled to get the same refurbs, but they haven't had them yet. With Disney World's upcoming 50th anniversary, there are lots of renovations and projects happening to get things looking their best. Definitely be sure to check if one of your top hotel choices is on the list for renovations or if they've recently had some work done. Another tip is to ask if it's mid-renovation, which rooms have been finished. You always want to try to get one of those finished, recently remodeled rooms because those are always going to be the nicest. So cast members are very used to people requesting a remodeled room. You're not ever guaranteed getting one, but that's definitely something you can request. All right, now we're getting into the fun stuff. What kind of theming do you want at your hotel? It's another thing to consider. Who are you going on your trip with and what kind of Disney World hotel experience are they wanting to have? Each Disney hotel has a unique theme, but we know that not every hotel will speak to every person. Are you the kind of people who want all Disney all the time? Then you'd probably love Art of Animation's larger than life characters or the all out theming of the Polynesian Village Resort, which is basically like Hawaii and Disney had a baby. Now, if you want a more rustic vibe, Wilderness Lodge and Animal Kingdom Lodge are great locations that are well-themed, but not as over-the-top Disney. However, we know not everyone wants super over-the-top theming. Maybe at your hotel you want a break from the parks, you just want to feel like you're at a hotel. Well, in this case, you might prefer the newer Disney hotels of Coronado Springs or the Riviera Resort, which still have touches of Disney, but have a more sleek and adult-feeling vibe. Maybe you want something less modern, but still upscale. Try the Grand Floridian or the Yacht and Beach Club resorts. Theming is important, and if you're going to spring for a Disney hotel, you're going to want to feel like it was worth every penny for your family. All right, next, let's talk about food. If food is a priority on your vacation, ah, uh, duh, yeah, of course it is, that might be the deciding factor in where you stay. Not all hotel restaurants are created equal. While all resorts will have some food options, the bigger hotels will definitely have more locations available to you. While the value resorts will have quick service or food court option, the deluxes are gonna offer you multiple dining spots, including those nicer sit-down restaurants, as well as lounge options. If there's a hotel that has multiple dining locations you want to try, it might be best to go ahead and stay there so you can knock these off your list quickly and easily. However, like any Disney guest, you can always travel to other hotels to eat, even if you aren't staying there. But things are a little different right now with COVID. Currently, you do need to make a reservation for a table service restaurant to stop by another resort. You can't just swing by for a quick drink or snack. And if you're dying to eat at the Polynesian, why not duck out on your Magic Kingdom day to grab lunch since you'll already be close by. If you're hoping to stop by Topolino's Terrace, you could always grab an early reservation for breakfast at the Riviera and eat before taking the Skyliner over to Epcot, which opens at 11 a.m. right now, and you won't have missed any park time. While it's always a good idea to have some restaurants you're interested in at your hotel, that doesn't need to be the final deciding factor if you're willing to travel for a meal. But man, it sure is awesome to have food that you like in your hotel, because there are going to be those days that you are just knackered to borrow a word from my British friends and you are just going to want to stay in your room and mobile order food from the quick service downstairs and send your 11 year old kid to go get it and then you don't have to leave. <laughs> I told you I was old and tired. Okay. Right. We're all clear on this. All right, next thing to consider, you've got a big group. All right, if your traveling party extends beyond the typical two adults and two children that are accommodated in most hotel rooms, then you'll be looking for other options. And never fear, there are lots, both on and off Disney World property. If you wanna stay on property, another perk of Value Resorts is at the Art of Animation Hotel. I talk about that one a lot. Apparently it's a great hotel. 
and All Star Music, when it reopens, have family suites to accommodate larger parties wanting to stay together. Like I said, these suites have a dedicated bedroom and a master bath, and I'll tell you what, there is nothing better than being able to close your bedroom door and leave your kids outside once in a while. While these run more than a standard room floating around 500 to 700 bucks, they can drop down to about 323 a night with a discount, and that could be worth it. I know it sounds like a lot. Disney World is sticker shock central, but 323 a night for basically a suite with two bathrooms and a master bedroom? I'll take that. Now, another great on-property Disney-owned option is the Fort Wilderness Cabins. These are priced as moderate resorts, but have a dedicated master bedroom with a queen-size bed and twin bunk bed, and they also have a full kitchen, lots of room for a much smaller price tag. They're a great deal. Nobody even knows they're there. And staying in a Disney Vacation Club room is another option for a large group. Disney Vacation Club is Disney's timeshare program, and the rooms, called villas, range from a studio, basically a standard hotel room with one bed and a pullout couch, to one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom villas. The larger accommodations have full kitchens and a washer dryer as well, and these are located in Disney-owned hotels, and they offer all the same perks. There are two ways to reserve these larger rooms. Book a DVC room like it's a regular hotel room. You can do this the same way you book any room in Disney World. Or rent DVC points from a member and book through them. It sounds weird, but it's actually a very common occurrence and can be very safe if you do it right. It can also be much cheaper than booking the room outright. DVC members get a certain allotment of points a year, and if they know they won't be using all their points, they might put them up on a travel site for rent. While you can do this through message boards, we love David's Disney Vacation Club rentals if you're looking for a reliable company to book Vacation Club points with. They're reliable, they're trustworthy, they do this all day, every day. I've had breakfast with the owner, she's awesome. I wish she didn't live in Canada or I would hang out with her all the time. I really, really trust this company. So if you're gonna rent points, David's Disney Vacation Club rentals is absolutely who you wanna go with, they're phenomenal. Okay, next thing we wanna talk about to decide if you're staying in the wrong Disney World hotel and help you find the right one is if you want luxury. Now I know what you think I'm gonna say, but I think I'm gonna surprise you. Now, if you're traveling with someone who needs true luxury or you really wanna treat yourself, this is your honeymoon, you wanna get away from it all, Disney's deluxe resorts might not be what you're looking for. Yeah, I said it, I'm not gonna take it back. Now, you'll actually find a Four Seasons, a Waldorf, and a Ritz-Carlton within Disney World's gates. They all offer Disney World good neighbor perks and amenities like early entry, early fast pass booking. And believe it or not, you can sometimes get great deals here, bringing their costs under that of Disney's deluxe resorts. Like with other non-Disney hotels, you can check their websites to see if there are any specials running. And believe you me, if you are looking for true, true luxury on property, you are gonna find nothing higher end than the Four Seasons. If that is out of your budget, Ritz-Carlton is gonna do you right. And then the Waldorf is coming in right underneath the Ritz-Carlton. They're very comparable. But yeah, those are gonna be your honeymoon resorts. Those are gonna be your celebration. Mom and dad are getting away from the kids. 50th anniversary. Those are gonna be your true luxury resorts. And even if you are staying at a Disney Deluxe Resort and you want a truly luxurious spa experience, Four Seasons Ritz Carlton, head to one of those. Now, I'm gonna talk really, really quickly here about club level. Now, this is Disney's concierge level, they call it, and you'll see it on the website labeled club level rooms. This isn't a perk that's currently running in 2021, but it might be something to consider if you're planning a future vacation and wanna add something a little more special to your trip. Club level rooms are offered at Disney's deluxe resorts. And actually I do think there are club level rooms at Grand Destino Tower at Coronado Springs Resort as well. Now club level has its own concierge and lounge, which has snacks and complimentary refreshments, which could even include food from the hotel's restaurants like appetizers and desserts in the evening. The lounge serves a continental breakfast each morning, which might be a great choice if you're on your way to the park. And they put out desserts, wine and beer in the evenings. Club level rooms are expensive. They usually cost about $100 more than regular rooms in the deluxe resort. And you might not find yourself at the hotel long enough to take advantage of all the club level lounge offerings. But if you're looking for something special, this can be a nice add-on. And if you also plan to eat most of your meals in the lounge, then you can save on eating at Disney restaurants. And remember, you don't need to worry about watching through again to take notes. Just head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash WrongHotel to get the full list of everything I just talked about sent straight to your inbox. 
So from budget constraints to dining and what kind of hotel your kids are gonna like the most, there's a lot to consider when you're booking your Disney World hotel. The biggest advice I can give you is make a list of your priorities and rank them. Is convenience the top of your list? Then focus on transportation options and proximity to the parks. Looking for something on a budget? Check out those value resorts, discounts, DVC rentals, and non-Disney hotels. There's a perfect hotel for everyone. It just might take a little bit of work and research to decide on the best one for you and your family. And I hope this has been helpful. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon. Leave us a comment. Let us know where you're staying on your next trip.